So, so the, the only person still, you know, really putting this for the stuff out in, in detail and aggressively is the former president. He's just put out a 12-page statement, and he goes through all of this again and again. Uh, uh, you know, look, e even even putting in some things here that they don't they don't even put on Fox News because uh, it, it it has been debunked. Um, but nonetheless, he's going through it here line by line. Uh, in it, he says, uh, Congressman, I'm sure you haven't, maybe you have had a chance to read it. We just got it. But there's a couple lines here that are uh, particularly important for your committee. He says, MAGA witnesses were interrogated behind closed doors and ordered to not record their own testimony. Yet the unselect pseudo committee has coordinated with their media puppets to broadcast their witnesses on national television without any opposition, cross examination, or rebuttal evidence. What are the members of this treasonous committee afraid of? Why can't they let the countervailing opinion be heard? Why are they hiding evidence from the public and only showing information that favors the Democrats' tall tale? Um, I can give you 12 more pages where that came from, Congressman, but I wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. Um, well, let's start with this. Um, there have been efforts to challenge the legitimacy of our committee, and they have all failed in court. The courts have repeatedly upheld the composition of our committee the purpose of our committee and the legitimate legal and uh, legislative function of our committee. So all of that is uh, silly. Uh, nobody has disputed a single fact that the committee has reported. We are a bipartisan committee that has undertaken a deadly serious solemn investigation into the worst domestic attack on the Capitol, on the United States Congress in our history, the first one to interrupt the peaceful transfer of power. So I, I understand that there might be more bogus, nonsense, BS claims coming uh, from the former president, but that's just quoting his own attorney general, William Barr, who he praised so much uh, over the years. No, you're right, he did praise him, and you're right, that is what the attorney general, uh, you, you played him saying about the president today. I want to ask you one other thing today that stood out. It got a lot of people talking, Congressman, and that was the allegations uh, in the hearing today that Rudy Giuliani was drunk on election night. That's when he went to advise Trump to declare victory, to do it early. Um, but, but the context was that he was uh, presumably drunk. Now, Giuliani's lawyer is de now denying this allegation. But I wanted to understand from you why you felt it was important to include. Um, I, I don't know that it was important to include because I really can't tell the difference between, uh, you know, those two conditions for him. And it doesn't make any difference because uh, what he was spouting, as uh, Attorney General Barr said and as numerous witnesses uh, confirmed, was complete nonsense. And he was, you know, telling fairy tales about, uh, you know, foreign leaders and deceased communists and so on. And it was just... Uh, one absurdity after another. And, um, you know, I think it was, I think the reason uh, why Congressman Lofgren decided to include that portion was um, simply to show that uh, Donald Trump was being advised by serious lawyers, serious campaign advisors, his campaign manager, that this thing was basically over. Um, the, it was a, a hopeless uh, enterprise. Uh, and on the other hand, you had uh, Rudy Giuliani, who may or may not have been inebriated at that point, but who's recommending that he go out and declare that he's actually won the election. Um, so that's an absurd situation, and it's one that is reflective of generally the path that Donald Trump was on. He was uh, recycling the most absurd claims in order to tell the big lie, keep raising money, and then leading all the way up to the disaster that took place on January the 6th.